wp-get web dev tutorials for all user levels. So you know that feeling where you feel like you've just wasted a whole bunch of time? Uh, well, not really wasted because you've learned a lot of things, but what you've been working on already exists and they've probably done it even better than what you were thinking. Well, this is one of my moments. So what I wanted to do is I do a fair few tutorials where I'm showing people how to do things that I've worked out from questions that come up in the communities. And what I thought would be really cool is if we could do the tutorial where you've got the code, uh, we've got an in-depth uh, explanation of the code, and then we've got a widget that you could use if you just want to grab a widget. So I come up with the idea of uh, creating a modular uh, plugin pack in effect for free modules uh, and this is where I got to building this uh, dashboard using uh, Vue.js and uh, Quasar and uh, this is just mock-up stuff at this stage but it's where you could add modules uh, modules would have widgets and you can enable disable them so effectively like what you do with these paid plugin packs uh, where they've got lots and lots of widgets and modules you can enable or disable I wanted to be able to do that for myself and for other people that I'm collaborating with. I had a conversation with uh, Maxime from Element Hell, and he mentioned to me the uh, unlimited elements, um, particularly the um, widget creator. And I have to admit, I'd never even looked at unlimited elements. And when I did, I've gone, what the hell have I been wasting my time on? It is brilliant. Now, in my case, I don't intend to sell plugins or widgets. I'm basically giving them away. So I don't need to have a paid version and a free version. So it works beautifully for me. So this now is defunct. So I've spent a week working on that, um, plus a modular structure here where we can just add modules and add widgets. And now that is uh, complete waste of time so I'm not going to use it. So you know that feeling where you've done all this work and you've gone hey now I'm not going to use it. I've got to admit I did enjoy learning so that's okay. All right so back to what we've ended up doing is unlimited elements. So what is so amazing about unlimited elements that I've found is that unlike other plugin packs it doesn't install all of these widgets. It just gives you like a library of them. And once you like it, or you can preview it if you like it, you then install it and then it adds it. So it's not adding to your install components. It's not going to bog down your editor. It's not going to affect your performance because this is just a library. It's not actually all pre-installed, which is fantastic. Now, the second coolest thing about this is that every one of these is user editable. So if you get another plugin pack and say they've got a PostGrid, you put the PostGrid on the uh, editor and you set your properties and you get whatever that is. Generally, the good ones are customizable, but not to this extent. So the only one I've installed here is the PostGrid. So if I roll my mouse over, see I get an edit button. If I roll my mouse over any of these others, I get an install or preview button. So I'm going to hit the edit button and show you what I'm talking about. So when we go into the edit, we can change the name, a whole bunch of properties here. We can rebrand this as ourselves. We set all the attributes, which are when we pick a widget, uh, let's say click on here, it's all these attributes here. Uh, those and if you've got styles, the style tab as well. So I'm going to click, click on this other widget because I've got a style tab. All the style stuff here, uh, that's all set in here. So this particular widget has got all these properties. Uh, it doesn't have items, so that's for your repeaters, etc. Here's the HTML for it. It uses the Twig um, templating engine, so there is a little bit of learning. So these uh, uh, variables here in uh, double curly braces are what, uh, what you would put in for a placeholder. And when you create all these attributes here, um, they automatically show up over here. So if I want the button spacing, I'm not going to put here, I just go there, click on button spacing, and there's my variable for button spacing. So I could do whatever I want with this post grid. That's the widget. Uh, and then we've actually got items in here because we're laying out posts. And again, we've got a uh, twig template 
Uh, there's also links down here where you can go to documentation and view more about Twig and how these templates and uh, you know the loops and all that sort of stuff work. So you can learn a little bit about that. But the cool thing here is that you can make this widget do whatever you want. That is the cool thing. So the CSS, edit your CSS. This one doesn't have JavaScript. Uh, include JavaScript. So if you want Font Awesome, you want jQuery, you make sure they're included first. Um, you can also add your own jQuery or sorry, your own uh, JavaScript or CSS files that will be included. So absolutely brilliant. Now, the other thing I saw in here, if I go back to these widgets here, when I pointed, see you got this other button here, I can duplicate that. So I can take their original, leave it as it is and duplicate it. And then I can add that to my own properties. So here is one that I've created. So previously I made a video uh, which showed a scroll sequence where we can use our mouse uh, wheel to scroll. And I showed all the JavaScript and CSS code for that in the tutorial. I've now turned that into a widget. Uh, so if I look at my widget here, so I've given a name called scroll sequence, given an icon. Um, I haven't put any link help or anything like that. Attributes, so I want a container ID, loop, show frames, preload frames, blah, blah, blah. So if I have a look over here, and I look at my container, there it is. There's my images, scroll container ID, loop, show frames, preload frames. That was all set with parameters here, or attributes. Uh, you can add some items because this is a uh, this is a special one where it's a um, uh, media gallery. Um, I also get this section here, and I can add some additional fields to that as well. So in here, I want to be able to select the image base fields and the title. Uh, sorry, can't edit that. Um, anyway, so my HTML is very simple. Uh, using the put items, I give my uh, div an ID, and in the items, I'm just outputting a image with a gallery item, and then the source being that item image for the gallery. So that's as simple as that is. Uh, my CSS is the same CSS I used in my uh, previous code. The only thing is you prefix it with a hatch and then the uh, UID, which I'll show you. Uh, JavaScript, uh, same deal. We've got access to all of those properties uh, and that's in there. And in here, all I've done is said I need jQuery. I actually don't think I need it for this, but I'll put it in there. So make sure it's loaded first. Um, and that is my widget. So if I went back to, oops, I don't want to edit that, back, go back to here, that is my widget. So if I wanted to add another one of these, I'd scroll down, here's my scroll sequence widget. So that is this that I've created here. Go back to widgets. So that's my scroll sequence widget with the mouse icon. Um, and all I do is, uh, where are we? Drag that onto the screen, add some images, uh, set up my uh, attributes, and I've got a scroll sequence. So really, really, really cool. So the next one I did was this uh, JS uh, event dynamic. Actually, I could have come up with a better name for that. So what this one does, it looks for title, etc. properties, I've got an event. So what event am I listening to? Uh, what property um, do I want to pull out of that event? Uh, in this case, uh, and then what, what do I want the pretext to be? What do I want the post text to be? And what do I want the default text to be? Okay, that's the attributes I've added. I don't have items. HTML, very simple. I'm just outputting a div with my UID. Okay, CSS. I'm just setting my line height to normal. That's because my container that I had this in before had a line height of zero. Don't need that. Uh, and I'm setting my default color to white. JavaScript, all I'm doing is listening for, so get, get my Allen book by the UUID, which is, yeah, so I'm getting this uh, HTML element by the ID. So I'm getting a reference to that. I'm setting the, uh, Enter HTML to the default text. So back here in my attributes, I set a default text, which is just these two lines. 
uh, two underscores. Uh, so I'm just saying set it to the default text. Add a list, event listener to listen to my event. Um, and then um, if there's no detail in the event, so I'm throwing a custom event, which I'll show you a little bit later, um, then just return. Otherwise, um, get out the detail property. Um, and um, if the value is undefined, then use the default text. Otherwise, create a HTML using the uh, properties from that event. So I'm just quickly running through this to show you what's possible. I'm not, not going through it in great detail. Right, so this is really exciting. Now, what this is doing, if I go back over to my, uh, actually, let me have a look at my, back to the widgets. If I look at my scroll sequence and look at my JavaScript, at the very end of the advanced frame, so when it's moving frame backwards or forwards, I'm creating a custom event called WPG, uh, WP get uh, mouse wheel frame. So it's the frame change, adding a detail attribute to it, which is the selector ID and the current image. So that's the current frame I'm on. So I will get a detail properly in the event, an ID and a frame. And then I dispatch the event on window. So that's pretty much every time the frame change, I get this event thrown with this detail thrown. Okay, so if I go to my JavaScript widget and have a look here, uh, sorry, uh, not there, where am I going? Go here and I have a look at my uh, JS uh, widget. So in my context, for my general, I'm looking for that event. So this WPG uh, wheel, uh, mouse wheel frame. So over to here, that was da, 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 back to widgets. Sorry, I'm all over the place here. Okay, should have uh, prepared, but I didn't. <laughs> okay, so I'm throwing this event every time the uh, frame changes. And then over on the uh, my dynamic event, I'm listening for that event. I'm looking for the frame property. So the frame, which is the current image. Uh, and um, I'm setting the pretext to frame. So this word up here, the post text to active and the default text to just two underscores. So what that's going to do, if it gets down to, where are we? There is okay. So if there's nothing defined, it doesn't do anything. All right, and then I've just got some styles for my uh, topography, pretext style, so I can set colors, et cetera, et cetera uh, and my post text, text styles. Um, these are actually in span, so I'm going to add some more property to these, to the, properties to these so you can uh, set some padding and uh, margin and all that sort of stuff on there as well. But this is just a, uh, a starter. So that is so cool. Like even in the editor, as I use my Welsh well on that, this event's getting thrown and that's getting updated. So Unbelievably good, uh, and I just wish I came across this a long time ago. Because the other cool thing here is when you've done a widget like this, so I can create a um, tutorial, uh, explain the code, create a widget, and then I can export this widget and I'll export it there. Okay, so that's given me a zip file, scroll sequence element, or zip. Now, I can now give that to anybody, um, even with the free version. I'm using the pro version. Even with the free version of Unlimited Elements, uh, you can import this widget and use it. So now I can support my tutorials. Those who you know, want to do it themselves, they want to chuck some code onto into Elementor and make it work. Um, those who... Uh, really want to learn and understand the code, or the, the JavaScript, the CSS, HTML, how it all works. Uh, and then those who just want a widget and uh, it can be all done from the same code. Uh, so from now on, um, that's how I'm going to do my tutorial. So I'm going to create all of that and make it available so that it's uh, available to uh, a range of people. So absolutely impressed with Unlimited Elements. Thanks, Maxime, for letting me know about it. I wish I knew about it before I wasted a whole bunch of time, um, but this is my new go-to. So thanks very much, and I hope you guys uh, get some value out of this.